bar of jacks a little bit ahead of who, I, who am I and why am I here? I'm not to the first part of that. So why am I here? You know, we couldn't get anyone, anyone better to take this from the house than you. So I have to fill in. Uh, okay, if, if I will, a couple things here. No, really, the real reason I'm here, social media is certainly fertile ground for financial technology applications. There's a lot to talk about. We don't have a lot of time. And have a full panel of four, so I ask all answers be please kept to 140 characters. Uh, no, but really, if we can kick things off, I'd like to just kind of set the stage here. If I could ask everyone to briefly introduce themselves and also briefly describe what your company brings to the table in this area. Start with Sally, please. All right, Sally Bova. I'm pre sales uh, manager for Tower Global. Sastri, I'm the CEO of iSentium. Uh, I hold three patents in the area of cloud storage and sentiment extraction. Uh, co authored four others pertaining to extracting sentiment from social media, which leads into what my company does. We analyze about a million tweets a day, authored by 350,000 different authors, and uh, we produce trading signals, which, in addition to selling them, we trade it ourselves. Okay, and uh, the next question, just want to make sure we're all on the same page here. What exactly are we talking about when we say social media? I think the automatic uh, association is, is Twitter when it comes to financial technology, applying financial technology. But, but what are we talking about? Is there more than that? And, and what else is there? I, 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 I would say that if you're able to capture a conversation or capture more than one individual sharing something, whether it's sharing something on Pinterest, obviously we most often think of, of Twitter because that's where most conversations take place publicly and more than that. But if there's a sharing of a conversation or a sharing of an idea, you're able to capture that form of data, that's I think what we refer, refer to as uh, social data. And I, I would agree, Twitter is probably your closest thing to real time news feed. If you look at a recent event, Twitter announced a leak their earnings. It took 15 minutes to hit the public TV network. So, but it was immediately on Twitter. It's become the new online streaming news feed. I mean, Facebook too as well, insights, but it's more trending data than it is Twitter. We also consider social media images. So there's a lot of people that will be at a store, like a Sears store, the panels, Brian Sazi, who goes around these public stores. So social media isn't just the article for the text, it's the content and you have to know where to find it. And then there's a trust thing, you know. So because Twitter is real time and you can look to see news, people try to manipulate it. And I know I sent you, well, you know, probably verify or a trust factor, but you need to be able to rely on what you're seeing. So Twitter is just, anyone can post anything. Um, post the CEO resigned and the 
you saw what happened the Bloomberg story about Twitter getting bought out. I mean, this made a new Bloomberg site. So it's a, it's a wild west in some respects. So it's like we got to be careful as well. Um, we got to know who to trust. To me, uh, in the context of finance, Twitter is the social media platform because it has the lowest latency, the highest throughput, and forces people to say what they have to say and, uh, say and shut up. Uh, which means that there's no run on tweet, uh, which makes it susceptible to sentiment extraction. Um, so those are the key ingredients which allow us to focus on that and everything else can be looked at later. We need to make money in the meanwhile. Gautam, that leads me to my next question. I, I think the power of the crowd is a, is a term that ISANTIP uses. One of you talk about the importance of that and uh, you know, what, you, what value you, you derive from it. Yeah, the premise is that the most efficient construct in humanity is a mob. Uh, if enough people decide to do something, it doesn't matter whether it's rational or not, uh, that's what's going to happen. So if 10,000 people decide to sell something, 10 experts are not going to stop them. Uh, larger examples of this are Rome being raised to the ground, the Arab Spring, revolutions, uh, tweet storms in London uh, that caused mobs to ransack liquor stores. Uh, the market is sort of like that. Uh, the difference is it's a world by trading bit, and uh, it's all about how many people agree on something, not who agrees on something. So uh, that's what we gauge. Yeah, Chris, I, you know, I would say, uh, and Chris and Sasha initially said it, you know, it, it's happening, it's happening on Twitter for social media in general. Uh, you know, I, I'm an investor in, in Disney, and I was just going over this example this morning at a meeting. I, I'm trying to figure out for myself the level of traffic at Disney Parks this summer. It's about a third of the company's revenue. One of the things I'm monitoring on ticker tags are social mentions of the word Disneyland and Disney World in Epcot, as well as the words Disneyland in conjunction with the word crowd or line. And I noticed that these tags have a higher level of social chatter this June versus June in 2014. Now, it's just one social data point, but it's up about 35%. And it's interesting. It's an important social data point that was never available in the financial industry in prior years. So I think this is just the beginning of an age where we can leverage the crowd. Because if it is happening, it really is happening across social channels. Sally, how can one use social media to drive trading strategies? You can aggregate. The big thing is, is finding the right technology partner. You can aggregate Twitter data to coming out with a new platform and they bought in it. Um, and in mid-August, that'll be your sole provider for getting feeds from, from Twitter. We use, we've been, we've worked with, Tableau has worked with uh, Twitter and their Ubiquit platform and using it as a data feed into Google um, BigQuery and then from there presenting that data for your traders or market participants so that they can use the data. And most big financial services information there are consumers of data versus publishers of data. How is curation important in the age of social media? Jason? Um, so, it's the point I was making before. There's so I mean, so we have a real time news feed. We probably put 400, 600 headlines out a day. Um, there's, it's, it's, it's a fire hose Twitter. Now, using it as an aggregate, like he uses it for Ascentium makes sense, but because there's so much noise and people trying to move markets the way they want to move them, you got to be careful. So when Carl Icahn puts a tweet out, our Benzinga analysts have a machine thing that, you know, can import it into our feed. So curation becomes so much more important, especially now because there's information coming at you from every which direction. There's CEOs that post to Facebook, there's LinkedIn, Twitter. Twitter's the main thing, but we're, when we're curating, we have to go everywhere. Analysis information can come from anywhere, from CEOs of the companies. They don't need to go to CNBC like they used to. Um, I mean, they come to us half the time now. So it's it's curation provides context. And um, like Chris said, that, that Disney example, that's another context thing. We we look at four square check in when we were looking at some of these restaurants, uh, I think it was on uh, Sonic, and they had bad retail sales. And our guys are comparing that over a time over a year. And he was saying that the force, so there's data everywhere. You have to put context around it. And that's where I think curation comes in because I can tweet out right now, you know, I have about 10,000 followers. You know, I can look at a small 
long have stock that's hitting trading and say something, and the stock can move. So it's, it's you got to be careful and you got to build that trust. And curation, I think, really saves people time um, if you're not looking at aggregates. And it um, also gives you that most important thing context. Okay, thank you. Uh, one thing I, I was reading, I saw an estimate that said one in 500 news articles are actually truly market moving. I would guess that that might that fraction might even be lower for, for social media posts. So my question is, when is social media actionable and how do you know what's actionable and what's not? This to me is kind of like a bottom line kind of question. So I'm curious to hear what people think. So I think if you're looking at using social media to help build your trading strategies, you have to take, take a look at what is actual market event, war, bomb, whatever it, it, uh, uh, that happened versus sediment in the market, and then try to tackle them slightly different. What you want to be careful for is that we're in 50 cents who says buy this little penny stock, and he personally made 50 million off of it. But there are market influencers, so it's aggregating the data and, and determining the difference. But it's definitely something you can't ignore today, because the social media platform is driving market sentiment and, sentiment and, and moving markets. So you can't ignore it. You can use your trading algorithms, but you have to complement it with some sort of social network of people. Actually, you know, I, I think social data does not have to be tradable to be meaningful, right? And again, what we do is we don't look at any financial chatter or I send any focuses on financial chatter. Um, but most of what our system outputs are just meaningful social data points. That Disney data point, it's one data point. It needs to be interpreted. The social data is no different than any other type of data. It has to be interpreted. And that's the job of the analyst or the researcher or the consumer of that data. Everyone is going to interpret it differently. Social data is also a starting point, right? Um, there are times, like one of the tags I like to track is cybersecurity or government plus hack. I've noticed over the last years when I see a spike in social data, um, with those tabs, the cyber stocks start to climb 12, 24 hours later, right? That's very rare. More often than not, social data is just one data point to utilize with the rest of your research. So it's not an all or none, actionable or not actionable. I believe it's continuously actionable. Uh, we've actually executed about 600 trades of SDY. Uh, we're about 29% in 2000. Uh, up 20% year to date with real money. Uh, we, we're in a partnership with the hedge fund. We're, we're trading $75 million intro a day. Uh, and we've had a 61% hit rate this year with a sharp ratio of four. So uh, it's like a wave of alpha swimming by. Uh, you can't trade events. Everybody piles into the same trade when a bomb goes off. You look at a chart, it looks compelling. But what was your fill price? Uh, you know, there's only so much liquidity, and when everybody's selling, uh, the chart looks good, but it's not actionable. What is actionable is you catch intraday or intra-week deviations from the standard deviation driven by underlying sentiment, and you make 15 bips, and it's idiosyncratic. You're buying when everybody else is selling because People express their intent before they do something. And my previous company, Bill Klaus, which for the US government, and what Snowden has revealed is, if you listen to everybody, you understand what they're thinking and you can predict their action. Uh, except with the advent of social media, you don't get to see the information. It's just a continuous stream of opinion. The other thing, and I don't want to be verbose, is about 30% of financial refer to some technical analysis that the author has done. So it's like a multiplexing of 500 different technical analyses, which is giving you a cumulative signal to buy or sell, and it's continuous. It's like having your own infinitely large team of quarks. Okay, the, the next question I had is a baked-in question, but it's quite time, and the question is, what is the risk of market manipulation on social media? I was wondering, certainly everyone saw the, the phony Bloomberg story about the potential Twitter buyout. Uh, there was a lot going on in just those few minutes that people seemed to think it was true or up 9% or something like that. 
wondering what are you, your perspectives on what happened here, who may have been caught with their pants down, who did it right, what, what's the uh, case uh, study about it, if you will, 48 hours later, or 24 hours? Well, even going back further, when the AP was hacked and said the White House was bombed, year, the first year before Bloomberg to verify that it was not true. Um, but uh, that's going to keep happening. Um, it's the, that's where I was saying it's a wild west in some respect. Um, people are going to manipulate when there's an opportunity to do that and trick the system, it's, it's going to happen. I mean, that AP example, the Bloomberg example, that Bloomberg was so easy to do. And um, it's so, it's, it, it, the sad thing is it gets people more, you know, more cautious and like trusting social media, but but at the same time, it gets people smarter in how to look at how to look at things. Um, what we try to do, like at Benzinga, is sort of democratize and give information to the average person. You know, at the same time that like hedge funds are perhaps we get like a real time or for example, when Twitter's earnings were leaked, um, when that they change the URL on their on their entire site. So it's. Um, the social media thing is going to get better and better. I think you'll see trust scores happen, and people will start knowing what's real, what's not. But that's where the medical click will be coming to try to verify and try and show people that this is really not. I mean, that Bloomberg story it was pretty easily easy to figure out that it was fake when they spelled Dick Estelle's name wrong. And the, the, the Chris has something. Well, I'll just say the great thing about social media is it's transparent. First of all, it's a starting point, it's, but it's totally transparent. So you have the ability to vet these things and next to real time like we did with the Twitter story yesterday, right? Like you guys did. So it's up to you as the investor or analyst to make that determination. You know, I always use the example on our platform, we track Kevin Spacey's attack for Netflix. He gets hit by a bus, someone's gonna see it, they're gonna tweet about it. The number of tweets with the word Kevin Spacey in it is gonna exceed 20x standard deviations within probably 60 to 90 seconds. Now if you see that happening on our platform, do you short Netflix before it hits the news? Or do you take another 30 or 60 seconds to look at the originating tweet? Was there a picture? Who was this that tweeted it? Are they a reputable person? Does it seem like it's real? That's that's your decision to make, right? And it should be like that. That this is the new world we live in, and you can't just make trades based on things that happen, like happen. So you're always going to get burned, and we will get smart. Aston Kutcher says, "I need Oreos." Yeah, if you can, yeah, 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 verify that it's really Ashton Kutcher. Yeah. And, and Thoughts on anything to add on this one? Or we can move on? Well, uh, I think, you know, somebody is going to throw a bomb every now and then, but you don't have a continuous series of bombs. And if it's true or not, you can't really do anything about it if the stock drops by 9%. Uh, what we believe in doing is continuously capturing alpha across enough tickers. We can trade 1700. So if a bomb goes off, here and it's wrong, we just ignore it. We just listen to the remaining 349,000 people. But the average person, how do they get the ability to trade 1,700? You know? Well, uh, that's why all our customers are institutional. Yeah, to a nice and to every single person. Uh, I want to make money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question. I actually found this to be one of the more interesting discussion points in our pre panel call. Uh, it, in institutional markets, the largest, most influential uh, folks out there are the, are the big pensions, the institutional investors. They're the ones with the most money sloshing around. However, these folks rarely say anything of any, any material value on Twitter. It's all about volunteer efforts or growing your 401k. So I'm wondering, my perception, at least as an you know, amateur in this space, is that there's an information gap. So I'm wondering, without those influential players' uh, voice being heard in, on social media, what are the limitations? So having worked in two different financial services institutions recently, Credit Suisse and Merrill Lynch, and running their IT shops, we lock them down. We lock down all desktops. For regulatory reasons, we have to be able to report for a certain period of time, eight, 10 years, every written form of communication that comes out of a financial services institution. So if you say, buy IBM stock, that has to be reported so that people don't leak Insider type information, especially if you've got investment banking that's doing IPOs and trade and, and mergers and acquisitions. So we lock down, even from a desktop perspective, we can't even check our Hotmail, Facebook, or any kind of outside information. So what we want to do is help in those financial institutions.
funnel the information in in a format where some traders can use it from a reliable source that you trust. Um, but it'll be a while before we can change the industry where our investment people are actually, uh, investment advisors actually tweeting things from a large financial services institution. It has to all to do with regulatory issues. That helps. Sure. Chris, anything to add? Well, I mean, we track tabs, we don't monitor people. Uh, we don't care who says what. If someone influential says something important, other people will start to talk about it and we'll pick up on the acceleration and chatter of that tag. So I'm probably not the best person to comment. I think you guys are people, right? So. No, we listen to everybody. Uh, for example, when Kyle Icahn tweeted that he had sold Netflix and he loved Apple, we actually generated a negative we generated a sell signal for both tickers because nobody cared about how I can like Apple. And if anybody followed Apple's stock around that time period, it continued to sell off. Uh, so we are, we've tried filtering it in, and uh, it just doesn't work. It's volume. Maybe it's the nature of our model that it filters. It, it just needs volume. The more people come into the system, um, the more alpha it produces. And that's the wisdom of the crowd and the madness of the mob. The bigger the mob, the more devastating the effect. Uh, so um, somebody's feeling that it's growing by 5 to 7 percent uh, you know, month over month, regardless of attempts to stop them from talking. And they seem to make sense. And then we're a little different from the Benzina perspective. There is probably a couple thousand that we actively monitor, and they're guys who will not even have sometimes real names, but we'll know they're at a certain hedge fund and they'll tweet stuff and they'll put stuff out there that disguise and say, look at this, or they want to get they want to get coverage. A lot of the games is how do you get coverage to a company that's a billion dollars and there's no <laughs> coverage on an analyst, there's not Wall Street. They tweet stuff, and they'll tweet it to Benzinga, but they'll, they'll leave from like a, a name, and then we can eventually figure out who it is, and, and it's interesting. I mean, we had a bunch of guys, I guess Ren Ren's a Chinese company that owns a bunch of internet, um, Motif owns a bunch of holding companies, and these hedge fund guys would tweet to us, and we eventually figure out who, who they are. So we're not an automated Twitter solution like I sent you, but we, there's a couple thousand guys that can move, I mean, quite a lot more than that, but there's, these guys who have these founds that can move markets. So this guy in China, and I forget his name right now, but over the last two weeks, he has moved like this ETF, the Chinese ETF, substantially every day. Anytime he tweets, he has 20 bucks with a problem. When he puts something out there, he's in China, everyone just like jumps on it, jumps on it. And, um, and that kind of stuff, it's not that easy to find, but we, just, we, we, we have the database, we track these guys and look to see when they tweet stuff out, but it's, not the core part of this, we just, we just have to be mindful of it because if somebody moves a stock, we need to report it. So, just one more quick point is we've been talking a lot about consuming um, social media da data. A very big trend that I, we see is people leveraging social media for brand management. There's a huge movement out there. People, especially in the big financial services institutions, that's where they're exploring. You know, how do I shape brand, my firm, through social media? So that will mark markets as you shape your Okay, I think I just have one more question and we throw it open to the audience for question. Uh, the question is, big banks seem to block employees' access to social media. I'm wondering if you know we're in the same, same discussion three or five or 10 years from now, which will be a totally different story and we'll say we remember when they used to do that or will it still be kind of a wild west perception and you know, very much not with a lot line with the interest of bank compliance departments? Well, I'm coming in from an IT organization in major Wall Street firms. I think we're seeing more and more regulatory pressure, especially with all the commodities stuff that's come down on us. Um, so I think we're going to unfortunately see more and more pressure and more and more closure of those doors versus opening up. I think it's going to take a market movement to actually release that. You know, I, I have a different take on it. Uh, you're correct, but uh, the reality is we have
have a big bank as a customer, I think banks are not going to open up access to social media because there's so much of it that nobody can figure out what it means. What are you going to do? There's 300 tweets per hour about SPY. Uh, how do you know what it means? You, you just, you're not going to look at anything else and you're going to be busy in 15 minutes. I think banks are open, or have already opened up small doors to social media analytics. The what does it mean question. Uh, our average revenue per user per month, we charge $15,000 a month to tell our customers, of which we have over 10, whether SPY is going to go up or down on any given day. It's a plus or minus one signal. And people are paying us, so if the door is opening. The key thing is to make it consumable. Uh, remember that traders operate with the reptilian brain. You know, it's all risk reward. Uh, they can't read 10,000 tweets a day. So the analytics opportunity is huge, uh, but the ability to read stuff on your cell phone, you're going to run out of bandwidth. I, I, I would say, I mean, social is the new. In addition to what you guys are doing, social is the new news flow. It's where news flow is going. Period. It's not stoppable. So if the market is interested in ingesting news flow and detecting change, and I don't mean change in terms of financial chatter, but just any type of chatter that's impacting anything that can be meaningful to any public good asset, um, the industry has to figure out a way to allow their professionals to visualize that data, whether it's directly to Twitter or through a platform like ours where you can just read what's happening on Twitter without engaging with it. Um, it's going to happen. But the, like, sort of one example, um, there's a company in Michigan that, that had a lot of change. It's a small cap. And they're, the people that are in the know in that company don't want to put it to Twitter because they, they have an edge by keeping the information to themselves. They're doing the research, just like an analyst doing research. So there's still a need for that investigative research because not all of it will be captured on social media. So if four of the top executives resign from a company, it's not it's not like in the leadership thing, so there's no AK file, and the an analyst that covers it, and you still have a need for those guys. Will social media change how um, will social media change? Absolutely. Um, but there's still that investigative need um, that you know there's companies doing it um, in the ETF space, but you're you still, there's still, like, where I would say, you know, Wall Street Journal, for example, I forget the company, is a banking stock, or a real, a read, like six months ago, I'm covering this whole story, the stock is down 80% since then, or 70%, and the CEO is, you know, in, 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 like, went to court. Social media didn't discover that. Well, well, the guy who's the investigative reporter on the read section of the Wall Street Journal has that experience. So you still, experts are still gonna be there, and social media will be, will help, pers you know, spread the story, but, I still think there's a need for analysts to do investigative research, not necessarily investigative like analysts, but you know, or reporters in some respect. You know, I don't, I don't like talking heads though, just like saying go buy this stock, go do this stock, because no one really knows. But the research I still think is important. Okay, I am told that we unfortunately don't have time for questions, but hopefully, uh, folks will stick around for the cocktail hour to questions on a one-on-one -on -one basis. I would like to just briefly close. I did ask folks to. Uh, Please give me 140 characters, what they think their, their takeaways in this panel are, so we'll go through, the, we'll go through them. Whoops, that went, went too far, went too close. Uh, Sally yeah. says, data visualization software can help identify trends across social media data and help you build actionable insights for trading strategies. Chris Camillo, the social web enables investors to keep up with evolving landscape of culture and news more efficiently than conventional financial media and research. From Jason, information can come from everywhere. You need to find sources you trust in this day and age when anyone can be a commentator. And Gotham says, I sent to engaging the trading pit with Twitter. With that, I would ask everyone uh, to give a round of applause. Um, <laughs>